sky continue to grow. Maasai giraffes can reach up to 17 feet tall and weigh up to 2,700 pounds. Right now on Denver 7 News at 8 o'clock on Local 3, a popular Denver park is now shut down because of violence. For something to happen to your friend like that, for no reason at all, it was senseless. Where police are in their investigation and when the city plans to have it reopened again. Plus, a Colorado man is first in the country to test positive for bird flu. What we're learning about the patient and how the virus spreads. Also, it is day two of the NFL draft, how the Broncos are gearing up to fill their roster needs as they try to build around a new head coach and quarterback. Thanks for joining us on this Friday morning. I'm Brian Sanders. And I'm Nicole Brady. It's not going to be a bad start to the weekend today, Lisa. Cooler than yesterday, a little windy out there. Yeah, not awful yeah. though. You're right. Uh, <laughs> a view there from Ilitches, and we're going to see uh, this weekend some warmer weather. Today will be on the cooler side though. Upper 40s as your kids are heading out this morning for the bus stop. We do have some sunshine to start. We'll see some increasing clouds this afternoon. Cooler, windy. The winds are going to start to pick up here within the next few hours. By midday, we're going to see some gustier conditions, and that'll be between about 40 and 50 miles per hour. It is calmer though tomorrow. It, you know, we were coming off of a couple of weeks where it was windy every single day. Today we're we're going to see winds and then tomorrow it will be calmer and beautiful. It looks like Saturday afternoon already starting to see those speeds pick up about 15 to near 30 miles per hour in the northern Front Range Mountains and foothills. So get ready for that this afternoon. It has prompted a number of red flag warnings covering most of eastern and well southwestern Colorado for high fire danger. Yeah. We'll talk more about the winds calming down and what it looks like with that chance for some rain this weekend coming up. I heard a lot of talk on Twitter about that already about warning about hey, fire, high fire danger, especially coming off I-25. Uh, so look at the drive across downtown. This is I-25 going down past Mile High right there by the uh, Millennium Bridge and it looks just fine. I mean, yeah, it is going to be crowded. Not real tight stop and go traffic. There are some spaces in between some of the vehicles here, but it is going to be one of our slower drives. You can see that on the map here, some of the slower traffic around town. We do still have this rollover crash by Children's Hospital, mostly westbound Colfax at Ursula, and we also still have some delays southbound on Colorado Boulevard getting past Alameda to uh, Virginia right before Cherry Creek Drive South or right at Cherry Creek Drive South. Uh, if you could get over to University, use Cherry Creek Drive uh, South. That would help you out, actually, and then go south on Colorado Boulevard. But the rest of the drive looks just fine. No big other big problems, just heavy in some of those usual spots. A spike in violent crime has forced city officials to now close Denver's La Alma Lincoln Park indefinitely. Uh, there are signs and fencing around the park this morning. It comes after 63-year-old Gary Ariano was killed there this mm. week. Now, friends say he was trying to break up a fight. Number 7's Jessica Crawford is live at the park. And Jessica, the city says the park will stay closed until they deem it safe mm. for everyone. That is true, Nicole, and this is a park that family and friends say Gary Ariano loved. He spent a lot of time here, and yes, now it is surrounded by these gates, and people are not welcome in for now. I'm going to give you a look at a vigil that was held to remember his life. That vigil was held last night. The Denver Police Department says that the man was shot while trying to break up a fight just before 8 on Wednesday night. He died after he was taken to a hospital. Denver Parks and Rec closed La Alma Park and La Alma Recreation Center yesterday, citing recent violence as the reason behind the closure. They tell us the closure is temporary and that they would reopen sometime in the future when they are safe to use. We spoke with friends and family of Ariano. Well, for something to happen to your friend like that, for no reason at all, it was senseless. This is where he spent every day. He loved this park, you know, he came out here and hang with his buddies. He was handicapped. 24-year-old Trahavani Deshaun Smith was arrested in connection with this shooting. Live in Denver, I'm Jessica Crawford, Denver 7. Jessica, investigators in Larimer County need help finding the parents of a six-year-old boy in Fort Collins who accidentally shot and killed himself earlier this month. Rosanna, Rosanetta McCall and Ron Matthews have not been seen now in over a week. Investigators say McCall left a handgun where her son could reach it. She's being charged with child abuse and an unlawful storage of a firearm. Matthews is accused of lying to officers and tampering with evidence. If you know where they are, contact the Larimer County Sheriff's Office or Crime Stoppers. 
Well, this morning, a Colorado man might be the first person in the country to have contracted the most recent strain of bird flu. Denver 7's Veronica Acosta joins us this morning because this person did have direct contact at a poultry farm. He did. This is a man who's an inmate at a state correctional facility over in Delta County. He's actually a part of a work release program that allows him to work at a poultry farm on the western slope. Officials said he was involved in the process of clearing out birds that were presumed to have the virus. He reported his only symptom was feeling fatigued for a few days, but that's all cleared up now. He's isolating and taking Tamiflu. Our partners over at the Denver Post reported health officials did say it's possible the virus may have been present in the person's nose without infection. Officials insisted at this point the safest thing was to assume that this was an infection, take action to contain and treat it. Dr. Rachel Hurley, the Colorado State Epidemiologist, told the Post, quote, we might never know if this individual was truly infected, meaning the virus was replicating in his body, or if the virus was just transiently present in his nose and picked up by that nasal swab test. Despite having the first confirmed case in Colorado, the CDC says it is tracking the same strain in bird populations in 34 states. In studio, I'm Veronica Acosta, Denver 7. Thank you, Veronica. Well, we are still in a pandemic here, and the state of Colorado has changed how to get tested for the coronavirus. 40 of the big public testing sites are closing tomorrow, like the ones at Red Rocks Community College, Southwest Plaza, and the 16th Street Mall. Officials told me there will still be 80 state-run community sites open, though. Uh, what is the recommendation for people who need to get a test now? Well, we really, first and foremost, you know, want to direct people to our website. Um, and we can provide you with that uh, that website uh, where we have locator tools uh, to make sure that people uh, can find our community testing sites and places where they can pick up rapid tests. The state can do about 26,000 tests per day, but demand has only been about 5% of that. Yes, hello there and welcome to Denver 7 Sports. The draft report, along with Broncos insider Troy Rank here. We're talking about day two of the NFL draft now. Because day one for the Broncos, nothing, Troy. They didn't have a first-round pick. And guess what? We don't care. It's great because of this man. There's your first-round pick. A proven elite Pro Bowl Super Bowl quarterback. We'll take Russell Wilson any day. We saw him on full display at minicamp this week. He's not just the quarterback, though. He's been a source of information when it comes to the draft. George Payton and Russ have been working together on what they should look for this year as they work together to build this team back into a Super Bowl contender. I talk to Russ daily and, uh, you know, kind of tell him maybe our plan and what we're looking for and, and our needs. And, and uh, Russ is, he's a football junkie, and he'll want to know maybe what players we're looking at, and I'll tell him, and he'll watch him and give me his opinion. And, you know, he's a great resource, and, uh, you know, it's, it's just good having him around. Going through the draft process, obviously playing 10 years in the league and, um, and, and playing a lot of football, you kind of you kind of know what it takes a little bit. And I think that, um, you know, George is, you know, always, you know, you know, give me ideas. Hey, what do you think about this guy? Hey, check this guy out and everything else. And uh, it's, it's great. You know, I, I, you know, I love football. I'm passionate about it. I'm passionate about the game. You know, I'm passionate about trying to do everything I can to help this team win. And so uh, that, that's the focus right now. That is good to hear, Troy. For the first time in a long time, the Broncos are not looking for a quarterback. So, uh, again, what are they looking for in this draft? Well, listen, the acquisition of Russell Wilson, as you talked about, lifted the veil of darkness. But they do have needs they must address still. Starts at cornerback, edge rusher, tight end, and offensive tackle. Those are positions they could make, get a starter out of, but they need depth, especially if you're going to make it to the playoffs in a 17-game season. You've got to build your roster. Second, third, fourth round, and that's George Payton's wheelhouse, Lionel. All right, well, let's hear from George right now, talking about his strategy in the war room for day two. When we get to that second day, we'll be on the phone calling every team and we'll have an idea of what we want to do that second day, especially as it, 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 it starts dropping, you know, to the mid rounds. And, and uh, then we'll decide whether we want to move up. Uh, do we want to stand pat or, you know, do we want to move back? And that kind of depends who's there, how many players we like are there. I like Trader Joe's and I like Trader George, too. I think something's going to happen, Troy. All right, you've got your Broncos mock draft posted on the DenverChannel.com right now. Nine picks in rounds two through seven. Who do you think will be the first pick at number 64 in round two? 
Yeah, I've switched my gears on this. I'm going Nick Bonita, the Oklahoma edge rusher. I thought it might be Chad Mumba, but Bonita is much more likely to be there. He is a person that could fill a need. He also could come in right away and be a rotational guy along with Malik Reed and Jonathan Cooper. Remember, Randy Gregory and Bradley Chubb have injury issues, so Bonito could be even in line to start in 2023. And then Chad Muma from Wyoming, the local kid, just up the road in Parker at Legend High School. He was a safety in high school. He is the kind of guy that makes scouts drool because he's rangy, he's long, he gets downhill, and he hits with ferocity. But Jonas Griffith's development inside makes me think Muma probably not going to be on the Broncos radar and frankly I think he's going to go in the 40s but Lionel I think they're going to trade up now it feels like a lot of buzz that they're going to trade up we'll see where that goes but again keep an eye on cornerback keep an eye on edge rusher all right the uh, first local player to be picked is going to be former CSU Rams tight end Trey McBride he was not picked in round one but from Fort Morgan to Fort Collins now to a big city Troy he'll be playing in the NFL that's for sure. All right, that's all for now. We'll be back later with your Broncos draft information right here on Denver 7 Sports. We'll see you then. And the NFL draft continues tonight. Coverage on Denver 7 starts at 5 p.m. with rounds 2 and 3. If you would prefer to watch local news, Denver 7 News at 5 and 6 will stream on the Denver 7 Plus app and online at thedenverchannel.com. It is getting a little easier to control your private information online, how a new type of app tracks down and helps delete that data. And a look at Colorado's current drought situation, but it's nowhere near as bad as California, the unlikely place they're now looking for drinking water.